Your Eminence Cardinal Napier, Your Grace Archbishop Chahal, the President of St. Joseph's Theological Institute, Father Ion, the academic staff, members of the Board of Governors of this institution, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen, and in a special way, the graduating students. It is indeed for me to be part of this special day in the lives of the graduating students. When I received the invitation to this celebration, I felt privileged. I can share with you that since arriving in this province of KwaZulu Natal on 3rd February, I have been exposed to the rich history of the Ashtasis of Devon. But also I can share with you that it's a record in my life I've never attended so many meetings. <laughs> But I have been able to learn so much in the last few weeks. And I've committed myself to actively putting my heart and mind and contributing to the best of my ability regarding the development of this local church. Graduation is an occasion for celebration. A celebration of many years of hard work, devotion, dedication, discipline and commitment. These have been put together to reach this day. There were many sacrifices that were made to achieve this goal and we are forced, you graduating students, to salute you all. Your efforts today are celebrated in this public space. You were able to stay on course despite of the obstacles that might have come your way. And we celebrate your achievements and we wish you well on the next chapter of your intellectual and career journey. You must be proud of yourselves because not everyone is privileged to be sitting where you are sitting today to receive your qualification, degree or certificate. I'm certain that today you are able to say with more meaning, with more confidence and joy, the words we find in Psalm 126, 5 to 6. Those who were sowing with tears were ripped with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed, will return carrying sheaves with them. We can therefore speak of new beginnings. And it is relevant to recall the words of the psalmist when he says, You have done good things for me, Lord, just as you promised. I believe in your commands. Now teach me good judgment and knowledge. Psalm 119. You will need good judgment and knowledge as you begin another chapter in your life. And I think the question that is very important for you today is what is going to be your own contribution to the growth of the body of Christ? We must admit as members of the body of Christ that certain events happening around us impose us with this question. What is the most important thing that the church today needs to be saying to the world? What should be the most important thing that we should say to the people of this country. The point is, we are in a world, a continent and country that continue to present various challenges. In our country, there are a number of disturbing issues. 25 years after having obtained our democratic rule, we still find ourselves with a number of challenges. The situation of domestic violence, <clears throat> political violence, rampant corruption, youth unemployment, daily protest by workers and students, and the damage to property. The disorganized state of public education, the anti-immigrant and refugees sentiment, human trafficking, 
and the rise of churches that draw many people who seek material rewards and instant healing. And the litany of other issues, these should disturb us. And what should be the response of the church to these challenging issues? There are those who maintain that the church is called to preach about sounder teachings so that more attention is given to family, marriage, and private morality. And that those who maintain that the church is called to put stress on social justice and the issues of peace, poverty, corruption, restitution, and reconciliation. But what is the role of the church in this country, not necessarily the Catholic Church? We have to ask this question because it is relevant today as it was. We have a foundational a definition and identity, namely our baptism. We belong to God. And at our baptism, we're given a mission to do the things of Christ. You are the light of the world. Your light must shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. In your studies, I suspect, dear students, you should have come across that great document, Lumen Gentium, Light of the World. This dogmatic constitution on the church was promulgated by Pope Paul VI on 21st November 1964. In this document, we have a, a very clear explanation of the authority, the identity and mission of the church, as well as the duty of the faithful. The church is the body of Christ. We are a people on the journey who are followers of Christ, who is the light of the nations. And in paragraph 17 of Lumen Gentium, we read that the church exists in order to bear witness to Christ. And so few people will dispute the fact that this document, Lumen Gentium, is still relevant today, and it continues to inspire people who believe that the church has an all-embracing an inclusive role in any society. <coughs> and so in order to realize the dreams of the fathers of Second Vatican Council, there is a need to have men and women like yourselves who will join other fellow pilgrims in responding to Jesus' message. He invites all of us to do what he did. It will mean as you graduate, that you move towards a life rooted in responsibility and consciousness. For there is a life apart from this one, where we as church workers, as bishops, as priests, seminarians, religious and deity, can be imprisoned to it. It is a life in which we become people who lack creativity and unconsciousness. It is a life in which we lack the passion to do the things that we have been mandated to do.